Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to Toy Grinds Live. My name is Grindhead Jim. I'm your host. And not only are we going to go through some of the basics we normally go through, not only are we going to talk about what you're looking forward to in 2023, I have a surprise depackaging stream for you. So basically, I felt that the topic only had so many legs, very little to go over in terms of pre-orders. And ultimately, I decided that... Uh, I needed to do something a little more, something a little different. And so I decided that I had to get some depackaging going. So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, I don't know how long it's going to last, but uh, we'll be around for a bit. So hope you guys enjoy it. If it starts to get out of hand, okay, what we'll end up doing is um, maybe taking that over to Patreon for an after show. So I have a timer going off to see what's going on. So, and yes, Bjorn, you fucking asshole. I do have some overpriced stuff because I knew you'd fucking ask about it. I know you'd whine and cry. So we have some just for you. No one else. Just you. So on that note, let's go over what little we have to deal with in terms of pre-orders. So first and foremost, we have Astro Boy. It's a six scale statue. It's 11 and 0.8 inches. 700 bucks. There you go, Bjorn. Are you happy now? Are you happy? Are you happy? So we got that one. And we also have this one. It's a Godzilla X Mecha Godzilla Solo Chigogan GX103 Mecha Godzilla MFS3 Type 3 Kiru. It's a big mouthful. Uh, and they want 360 bucks for a 9 inch figure. Okay. Not to be outdone, for just $295, you can get the richest, scary, supersized Huckle Cat vinyl figure that you don't even get a preview of. I recognize this logo of the busy world of Richard Scary, but uh, I don't remember anything about the book. So I'm kind of curious as to why any character from this would ever be this much money, even if he's 16-inch. The big boy. I don't get it. I don't get it at all. Lord of the Rings back with a Minas Tirith and Tirith and Minas Tirith, pardon me, environment for six hundred bucks. It is eight by eighteen by twelve inches. This thing is not very big. It's like this. By this. Eh. Nah. Meh. Okay. Eh, I don't get it. A 112 scale Shao Kahn from Storm Collectibles, and it's exclusive to BBTS because Storm Collectibles. 100 bucks. I like Mortal Kombat much as the next guy. Maybe even more than the next guy. 
hundred bucks is a lot big ask for this character, but he looks cool. And if you like Shao Kahn enough, might be worth it. It's a little bit more reasonable, right? A little bit. Something that came up today. Something that came up right this morning when I was having coffee. This musculoids line, which is clearly a nod to He-Man, but they're making the figures hilariously too big in terms of their muscles. And they're all fairly unique designs from what I can tell. I don't recognize them from anything, but they're five POA. There's no accessories that I can see when I looked at these listings and they're $55 a piece. I don't understand at all. And the big appeal is that they have these extra big muscular arms and legs and the feet. Everything is just bigger. Just exaggerated He-Man stuff. Five POA, you get exaggerated features, some veins for 55 bucks. I don't understand at all, but I'm grateful that it, there are companies out there doing things like this because there's a market for this somewhere. Somebody wants them. It just ain't me. Um, I'll go over a couple of the ones I thought were kind of cool. I like the design on this. This is cool. This is different. I would expect to see this on the shelves of like a Revco or a drugstore or something back in the day. Would have been great. We, of course, have a big bear. I think it would have been made more sense for a character called Frostbite to be called to, to be white for a polar bear. But I guess you can't have everything you want. You have Torg, who's clearly just getting out of a disco. Maybe he's a bouncer. I don't know. Um, but there's some cool character designs in here. I'm not going to not going to downplay that at all. I, I just think the price point for what it is is a bit high. Personally, uh, certainly not uh, the right price point for the niche that I would think this would fill, personally. Now, there's, you know, bound to be someone that might like these at that price. Speaking of things you might like, for those of you who didn't get it the first couple times around, maybe you're having a hard time finding it. The Masters of the Universe Origins Mecha Neck and Ground Ripper are back up for pre-order, Okay. So they're coming in. So if you haven't been able to find this and you want it, it is there. I wanted to call that out. Another thing I want to call out for those of you that are into customization and or Marvel Legends. This Zerg figure from Mattel, which is a has 17 points of articulation and is 13 inches. So it's real good for a Sentinel. Looks almost picture perfect to a Sentinel if you swap out the head. And there are some 3D printers out there that will, you have a head that'll swap. Um, it, it's certainly something to consider because it's on sale for 20 bucks over at uh, Shop Disney. So I, I think it's a good buy. If you want a Sentinel in your collection, it's going to call it out there. Um, I'm going to catch up with chat here in just a second. So that's all I have for pre-orders. I looked all day long to see if there's anything else we haven't caught. No major news that I'm aware of, which is part of why the show is going the direction it's going. So let's catch up with chat. I see. Some of y'all having to skip ads? Okay. And thank you to Bill Wifta for letting me know that the mic was live. It's because I had the wrong sound card checked. It's my fault. Thank you. Uh, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. I see Ricky and Ian Sweeney and Epic Badger and Boba Hicks and Johnny Sorensen and Jason Garcia and Kieran Ball and the aforementioned Bill Wifta and Largo's Lair and Wilhelm Toyn Hop and Bjorn Jorkensen and Melvor. I did say $700, unfortunately. Um... I think that's everybody. Ian Sweeney, I think I said. And Bing Long is here. So there you go. Um, <laughs> laser tigers? No, sharks. Laser sharks. I get that too. 
Bjorn's definitely getting the Zerg bot. Not a problem. I totally understand that. So uh, I'm gonna just going to prime the conversation, let you guys kind of do it. Um, but I want to know what you're looking forward to in 2023. Are there toys that are coming out that you're really interested in seeing? Things you hope to see, that sort of a thing. Um, I kind of gave away some of my big ones on the title card. So Origin Snake Mountain is slated to come out in the fall. Uh, they just did a, a reveal on um, a Televiper and a Trouble Bubble for Classifieds. Really excited for that because of the Trouble Bubble. And I really wish they'd sell the Trouble Bubble separately, but I will be getting two of them because I like Trouble Bubbles. Probably one of my favorite G.I. Joe Cobra vehicles out there. They're hilariously um, unrealistic. They defy the laws of physics, but I love them and I'm looking forward to those. And um, what the hell else was on the damn title card? I don't remember. Um, oh, the Krang. So the Krang from the BST AXN is pretty cool looking. And I'm hoping Playmates comes out with one as well. I really hope that they do that. But I have the BST one coming, which is super cool. Looking forward to that. Um Roman a cardboard asked if Zerg has Zerg has ratcheted knees. I don't know, but I'm willing to bet he does. I'm willing to bet that he does. Um, no badger. We're not even close to being done. Uh, Roy Rage is peeking at those prices, Johnny. I don't blame you. I, I knew if I didn't show you guys overpriced stuff, you guys would freak out. So I had to do something. Um, Bjorn says, several figures looking forward to in 2023, mainly Marauder stuff, some at Joe Fest. Right on. Boba Hicks is looking forward to picking up some stuff he missed toward the end of 2022. That's valuable. That's valuable. Badger says, no trouble bubble for me, but I'll keep an eye out for those looking. Johnny Swanson says, Snake Mountain, Snake Man, Snake Snoop, Snake Sneakers, Snake. Fair enough. Yeah, Movort. Tr trouble bubbles are great, man. I love the trouble bubble. It was one of my first Cobra vehicles as a kid because it was cheap and I loved it. It was just so cool that there was a lot of detail on it. And like, I loved how the fins moved and everything loved it to death. In fact, when I was helping, um, reclaimers vintage handle that big Joe lot, there was a trouble bubble in there and I put it all together. I was playing with it and I took it back apart and put it away. But, uh, you know, Bing Long says snake Kraken. Well, we are doing, we are looking at doing a, uh, a Cthulhu, which I have more tentacles and more snaky vibe to it. So, well, my cardboard is looking forward to surviving the year. That is also valid. So, with that, we're going to get on boxing. And I have very specific two toys that I want to start with. But before I do that, I want to tell you what the goal is. Okay. So, my goal here, this bin here is empty. So, I'm going to grab that and put it next to me. That's where all the bagged figures are going to go. The idea is to get bagged figures in there. Get the already bagged figures out of this. Get all the bagged figures into this. Take care of any boxes that I need to get rid of. And then free up this for stuff that comes in so that I don't have to stack things as much anymore. The stack of boxes you've seen in the past are behind that bin. None of those are getting unboxed because most of them don't need to be unboxed. Some of them are like the N64 and controllers and stuff that need to go into storage. But the main benefit here is freeing up space in that bin so that when stuff comes in, I can put it in there until I depackage it. And the other one is to free up this bin for bagged figures, which also, for those of you who have ever seen the other side of this room, I have a big stack of containers. And on top of that was a bunch of precariously balanced toys and stuff, and all, all that's going away. Uh, they're all here. All the toys that were balanced there are, are, are here. So I want to get all of them into a bin, reclaim the use of some of that space, and maybe even take that bin and put it up top. I don't know yet, but we'll see. Um, I even found that the bin that has all my superpower stuff in it, I was able to put some spare parts that I had gotten over the last couple of months, like the spare parts for the Dark Side Destroyer, including both the belts, we have them in a nice padded bag. They are now safely in the superpowers bin. I don't have to worry about where they're at. So that's the, the goal right here. So I'm going to 
take these couple toys off and then we will take this bin down and get going get moving get doing the thing Bags, some rubber bands, and this should tell you how long it's been since I opened this bin. I have three cheapo Target figures because I was worried about getting these characters when I first started collecting Legends, and uh. I have no use for them now. I'll probably sell them at Retro Palooza for five bucks or something. But there you go. Take this down. Okay. Cool. There we go. Catching up a chat here, boys. Hope I didn't miss tonight's expensive statue. You did. Um, there were like five of them. Bill's on the fence about Orton Snake Mountain. I'll know if I actually see what retail, I'll probably get it. I'm definitely getting one because I think the improvements are worth it, period. Period. Even though I have a complete vintage one. Joneser also doesn't need one because he has a vintage as well, but he wants one. Same here. John's driving home. Be safe. And Bing, uh, Rolo's in relatively good health relative to his condition. Uh, he's been in uh, independent living uh, since December. So he's in a hospice care, but he has his own space and uh, they take good care of him. There's been developments with his uh, medical stuff, but he is continuing to seek treatment. And uh, he's still very much him and very much active. So thanks for being concerned. The Toy Jenga Tower of Doom. Yes, we've all been there. Yes, 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 yes. Um, collecting stacks of toys. It, it's got to be done. It's got to be done. Um, rare sighting of my legs. Yes, that's true. Ian Sweetie says, my Masterverse Battle Cat arrived, but it's still in the shipper boxes and boxing up stuff to get for Annex decorated. Fair enough. Yeah, when things arrive in shipper boxes, if I'm not immediately going to display it or something, I just leave them in the shipper box. Like, I have my Serpentor and my Sergeant Slaughter back there. As I'm saving both of those boxes, there's no reason for me to take those out at all. So they're going to stay in there until I'm in the new place. Um, new Stake Mountain and David, yeah. I, I wouldn't say Hylian Dread that New Stake Mountain's night and day better. I wouldn't say that until I see it, but the concept, I definitely think it's a gigantic improvement over the original. I agree. Logic Blast says, how's it going? Great to see you. By the way, folks, I'm 100% COVID-free, tested negative this morning. Feeling good. And no one is here as well. So let's get to some de-packaging. I don't like saying unboxing because that's different. Unboxing and depackaging are two very different activities. So for those of you who have never seen me do this, I don't save a ton of packaging. I save some. I don't save bubbles. I save most of my card backs. And when it comes to boxes, most of the time they go away. For Motu Origins vehicles and play sets, I keep them, but I like to flatten them when I can. Um, and when it comes to any other kind of box in the trash, they go. So, and I put them in poly bags, like this and like this. And Melvore, if you're still in chat, 
your bags are still right the fuck over here waiting for you to come pick them up sir so you just come by whenever you want and i'm not going to do some intermediary i'll see this person this day and get no we're not doing that you got to come get them sir coming up on a year these bags that's right bjorn what was the first depackaging stream I ever had? It was the first time I did a mass depackaging of toys, period. It wasn't just like a, here, do this. I had so many packaged Motu Origins, which was the big focus of that stream. I needed to get them out of the package because I had no room for them. So I'm getting to that uh, time and place now. So I, I got to do it. We're going to start off with Ghost Rider. Okay. I love that he is on a square bubble instead of that circular stuff that the Fantastic Four stuff has been on. Makes it a little bit easier. A little bit. Not by much. And yes, Bill, I'll be careful. I haven't looked at the chat, but I'm sure he's already said it. There we go. Got one side. Oh, this one's a bit rougher than I'm used to. Might might be the blades getting dull now that I think about it. Might have to do something about that in a bit if it persists. Oh, Got to cut that a little bit. Hang on. It should just come right away. Yeah, it should, but it's still stuck on a couple places. Great. Oh, good enough. Close enough. Eh, yeah, I'd have to I have to go back and clean that at some point. But cool card back, definitely a keeper. In the bin it goes. Remember, kids, always cut away from yourself. There was a time when I raised the question of keeping the packaging. There was a time when I raised the question. There are many boxes that I get that I still do not want to get rid of. Point of fact. Well, this ain't one of them. This is a great figure, though. Love this. Good old Ghost Rider. Somewhere in between Danny Ketch and Johnny Blaze, but who's paying attention? We are. We are. A bunch of great extra hands and effects. And he has a pretty cool, I forgot to use my dander shampoo head, which is great for a, a Johnny Storm. Many people have been seen using it in customs for that. I like that his chain is a bit flexible, so it's less likely to break, but I don't like that it's not posable. It's a trade-off, I suppose. Aha, that answers that question. Okay, so one of the things I asked myself when I got him was like, is his jaw uh, articulated? And I'm happy to say that it is. I'm trying to get him out of this miserly pose because when you take him out of the package, they sometimes look like a doddering old man. But here's your ghost rider, and his jaw does, in fact, open. A little on the loose side, but it does work. So you can get a little bit of this, a little bit of that, as far down as that. But I like that. I like that a lot. That is very cool. Now I'm not bagging him right away. And you're like, why the hell are you not bagging him right away? I'll show you. Because the next thing I have to unbox, I want to test something. I bought this on Amazon. 
a year ago, not knowing what the hell I was going to do with it. This is the Bat Cave Curse of the White Knight Bat Cycle. And I was like, maybe Action Force, maybe G.I. Joe, I don't know. But when this Ghost Rider comes out, and he's got no, no bike, and I like the 90s version of Ghost Rider the best, this morning when I was looking at this, I said, well, why the hell do I just use this for Ghost Rider's bike? So I'm going to see how feasible it would be. So I said, need to put a flame effect in that mouth, Hellfire. There you go. Okay. So they got some pretty spectacular zip ties here at the bottom. Keep it in play. I don't see a lot of reason to keep any of this packaging, so it is going to go straight in the trash. But we'll get there in a second. For now, I got to get the spike out of here. All right, I think that's it. This is chonky. Now, it comes with a collectible card. I don't have any interest in it. Does anyone have any love for those? Because I don't really give a crap at all. So this is the bike. Comes assembled, which is nice. Nice hefty wheels on it. And it's got that nice wide wheel so it stands on its own, which is a nice touch. Nothing really action-y on it aside from the rolling feature. Now, I want to see if Ghost Rider... Ghost Rider rides a Harley with flaming wheels in some versions of the comic. In the 90s version, he has like this futuristic souped-up bike with flames that come out of it. I can get flame effects to put on this thing. That's the thing. I like the idea of Ghost Rider having a pretty futuristic, badassery thing going on. All right, his hands fit onto the... the The handlebar's just fine. He more or less gets to where he needs to be. There's probably some other things that could be done to make it look better, but this is pretty cool looking, if you ask me. Some more customization would need to be done to make this really look cool as a Ghost Rider bike, but it's very cool. I understand it looks more like a Judge Dredd. Look, stop yucking my yum. I didn't say you have to fucking do this. I like it. Fuck you. I'm kidding. Um... Yeah, the, I looked at the death metal bike, Steve, and in fact, I have that saved to look at because I like that, but, but it's very, uh, he's got big old bat ears on it. That's the thing. So there's big bat ears on this thing, which really ruin it for me, but it's only 16 bucks. So it is something that I might end up doing. The bike extends? What do you mean it extends? I don't see any instructions anywhere in this thing, but okay, we'll look at it in a second. What I actually used was this, um, and it's 19 bucks right now. I got it for around 15, 16 bucks. Um, depending upon your usage case, this is very nice. It's pretty well made too, so uh, think about it. Jason says, cut the ears off. I thought about that too. For now, this is what I have, though. I wanted to see if the scale worked, and it does. It does work. Um, I enjoy it. I think it's cool. It's something. It does. Pull it. Where? Pull it Pull it where? Because I want to just break it. Like, where does the extension happen? Because everything here looks solid. Like, look at this. You tell me where that pulls apart. Like, there's nothing on the toy that indicates it does this. I understand it may do something in the comic. Let me take a look at the pictures in the actual ad. We'll see if it shows it doing that.
Yeah, nothing in the imagery anywhere in the... I see nothing. Big chunk front, pull the tip. Oh, so it does. Oh, okay. Pretty cool, gents. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. I don't know which I would use it in. I'm kind of in love with that, but that looks a lot cooler. Yeah, I think that looks better. That's very cool. Thanks for the hot tip. I would never guessed. Transformer. Exactly. Now, I'm not going to bag the that because it's pretty boxy. I don't see the point. Uh, but I am going to trash this packaging before I actually bag the figure. And given the fact that this stuff is... Uh, like, I don't see the point of breaking this down for the trash at this point. Might be able to crunch that inside, though. Yeah. Use some negative space, bruh. Yeah, there's some extra flame effects with the figure as well, uh, Kieran. I, I, and there are some other ones you can buy that I think would be a good uh, fit. But yeah, there's tons of stuff you could do to it. Always like Ghost Rider on a horse. Okay. That's right, Eddie. Got himself a brand new bike. Because they didn't have the good sense to give us one. And I had this. I really didn't have any plans for what I was going to do with it. So, it, when I was looking to unbox this stuff, made sense. Made sense to me. Okay. So now we... And now we bag. Okay. So... Oh, an extra bag there. <laughs> Pose is pretty well right out of the box. I gotta give him a lot of credit. And I didn't really notice that he had the flame and neck going. That's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I like it. And he is a little bit on the tall side. Let me do that. Let's see if I can get him there. There we go. Alright. Extra head. Extra hands, which I'll probably be using for the bike because it just looks cool and creates some contrast. Flame effects. Under chain. There we go. And now he is bagged. He is bagged. Johnny says, ironically, that bike works poorly with the 7-inch Batman that goes with it. These McFarland bikes don't work better with, with six inches of limpsy fit. There you go. Works for me. It's very Tex X. Absolutely. So let's get moving on, shall we? So this is a bit of a cheat. Because they're already out of the package, but I want to get them in a bag and get them to howl off my shelf. So many, many moons ago. Bill Wefta showed us how to make a Kronos trap jaw. And I just buried the lead there. Hang on. And while I have that Origins of Evil 2 pack, uh, I wanted to get a separate one just for that purpose. They're not expensive because no one wants this damn figure. Got mine at a good price, and the knee snapped off. So I was very distraught. So I ordered another one. 
And I have not really touched him since I got him. So I'm going to heat him up before I do this custom. But I have another one that I purchased as well. So I also purchased the Masters of the WWE Universe Steve Austin and a incomplete vintage trap jaw to create the effect. So I have all these to create one figure that I have yet to create. And I'm not going to do it right now. So I'm going to put them all in a big. I'm going to put them in a big. So. Butterfingers. Just, no, just the first one broke. Just the first one broke. I mean, the, the first one that actually did break. I mean, he was like $8 shipped. It was not like... They didn't charge me an arm and a leg, no pun intended, um, for that, which is fine. So I'll put the two chronoses in this bag. And then I'll put the parts for the custom in a separate bag. A complete set of those WWE figures came in your job the other day. Nice. Some of those fetch a lot of money. That's the Sergeant Slaughter in particular, which I did want. But the more I look at them, I'm like, I don't really need them. I got enough Sergeant Slaughters running around this house. Stone Cold Trap, y'all. That's right. So here's the Stone Cold. Here's my vintage Trap Jaw. The arm thingy, which is what you all you really need from the uh, vintage trap jaw, and all the extra parts from Stone Cold being a trappy jaw y kind of guy. Yeah, Slaughter and Andre were really difficult to get. Hello, Rob Vegas. Welcome to the show. We're just doing some depackaging. And let us know what toys you're looking forward to in 2023. Good to have you. So I'm going to play some music that is safe for stream. You may not be able to hear it, but I want to play something. It's a little too quiet for my taste. Give me a moment. Oh, it's over here. Or is it? No. Where the hell is it? Am I staring right at it? I don't realize it. No. Oh, yeah, it is right there. <laughs> 25 likes. If you do, you get to post the thing. <laughs> nice. Looking for the toys you don't know about to catch your eye. That's fair. It's fair. All right. Mm -hmm. 
There we go. Now we got some some music. And it should be coming through at least a little bit. Could have bagged the broken leg or flush, but bagging it, bagging the whole thing, man. Because because the thing is, like, I can use that as like die around like he's like he's busted. Like maybe the reason, like so maybe I'll have a, a thing where he's like, ah, my leg's off, and then they make him into the prototype trap jaw. You know, Doctor Grindhead Frankenstein, you would you service? Like I said, it was Bill Wifter that 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 caught me onto that. Which was a cool idea, and I'm really grateful that he... And he I don't think he, even he was the first one. Now, I'm still cheating a little bit here. But I have these figures that uh, the Badger sent to me. Now, the weapons are in one of these bins somewhere, but these figures have been laying loose for a long time. Tom and Jerry, my... First Black Series Stormtroopers. They're going to get big together. So I know exactly who they are and who they're from. So we'll always treat them with respect. One thing I've thought about doing is getting some markers and putting a little blue dot in the bottom of Tom and a little brown dot in the bottom of Jerry on the bottom of their feet. So, so I know it's them. Still might do it. Still might. You watch. I'll do it. This is a custom uh, Scarlet that he made for me from uh, Snake Eyes Origins. Uh, Snake Eyes Origins uh, thing. Yeah. You have a Rob Vegas has a display cabinet for the GI Joes and Cobras. Nice. Stephen S says, "Did I hear you correctly yesterday? Mill Jordan is being canceled." No, you did not hear me correctly. They are not canceling a fucking thing. Even if you're just making a joke. No. Didn't. No, Bjorn did not send out those those figures. A ton of figures I haven't sent out. And I need to get them sent out. And that's really that's part of why I'm doing this. Because I'm getting pissed off. I can't find anything. I want to make sure I find everything found. That's part of why I'm going through all this. So, thank you for your patience. I don't know why that's not catching up. That's weird. <laughs> yeah, Stephen. I no, no. The only the only time I'll mention that that line is over is when Mattel says it's over. Next up, Walgreens exclusive Jigsaw, which I have been after for a hot minute, and Walgreens had it a few times, and uh, I tried to get it on multiple occasions, and I got. Denied at every turn. Really pissed me off. Because first they had it on sale for $6 over Thanksgiving. And then said they didn't have it in stock. Which is like, oh, someone made a mistake. And then I ordered it at full price with their blessing and a coupon. Still didn't have it in stock. And then Nerdzoic got it and uh, I ordered it from him. And then when I got COVID, I used the credits that Walgreens gave me over the whole debacle and bought myself all the medication I would need. So there you go. That's how that shit works. So this is a pretty robust figure, man. You've got tons of knives and weapons and effects, which are really cool as far as I'm concerned. Um, and I love the old school Punisher and I kind of love how ridiculous Jigsaw is even though he's not that big a deal overall 
it's just a cool character. It's a cool villain. I do plan to display them together. You've got Machete. Got an aluminum baseball bat, which is quite nice. Oh, it's no worries, dude. Music things that makes <laughs> your call is very important to us. I can change it to something a bit more upbeat if you want. Minecraft? No, fuck Minecraft right in the face. I do not like Minecraft. Let me let me switch it up a little bit. Because I don't want to like turn away anybody who's not into certain things. But let's go with Ooh. Some piano stuff might be nice. We'll see. All right. Oh, that's, again, no worries. Um, press 2 for Española. Press 6 for Repeat the Menu. Press 9 for a different sounding robot voice. You're not wrong. I'm trying to get this tape up without the accessories flying across the way. Okay. All right. So you got this little sawn off shotgun, which is quite nice. And it comes with both blast effects and smoke effects. So this is one of the blast effects. They have one for each barrel, which is nice. And I realize that this came with a different figure as well. I don't remember who. Uh, but this is, for me, like, I don't have that other figure. And I love the idea of these smoke effects. Which are really neat. So I'm looking forward to displaying with that it also kind of makes me want to make a, a custom mad max figure and give him the sawed off and what's interesting is they give you all these great accessories for him but nowhere to put any of them except for his hands which is odd to me very odd hey ted millage how you doing pal and two daggers that look like that. All right, Jiggy. Let's get Jiggy with it. There we go. A little bit of jigsaw action there for you. I'm not going to pose him because he is so hard to get a hold of. I'm not doing anything to I heat him. But... Uh, he looks cool. I like this guy. He looks great. Definitely some cool stuff with this guy. And as suspected, no storage whatsoever for any of this crap. So in the bag, he is going to go. Badger says at first, first Will says Andor was 10 out of 10. Didn't say Andor was 10 out of 10. And Jim says F to Minecraft. I feel only betrayal. I mean, that's fair. Never liked Minecraft. I understand the appeal on some level, but it is not for me at all. At all. Let the reign of Hasbro informational text begin because every time I open one of these, little piece of paper just falls right out on the floor. We're up to two so far. Boop, boop, beep, boop, boop. Right. All the effects in there. The bat and the machete.
and then he goes. I love seeing how much less space they take up when you do that kind of stuff. All right, this is my animated series Cyclops. I am keeping this box, so I'm not going to be doing anything with him. In terms of, like, what's the point of him taking up twice the space? So in the bin he goes. In the bin you go, sir. Hoi! Bunch of these guys coming at. We don't have a space to put these. Cannot wait until we get in the new place and I have a separate desk area for actual workspace. But I'll make do with what I got. Oh, stay the fuck. Thank you. There we go. That works. So now I can get this done. High Evolutionary, who's it originally arrived bent and it straightened out the way I stored it, mostly. Pretty happy with that. Okay, this is going a little bit smoother than Ghost Rider. Which would lead me to believe that the blade is not kicked yet. Okay. Much better cut. Much better. Come on. Get in it. Nice, got to get his hands out. Ah, I'm reaching. Great Jack Kirby of them. Fist! The new Bandai Movie Monsters, nice. Maybe have a tub to put the bags in that you bag the toys in and put in the tub. No. The way this layout is here, like, I know you're half joking at least, but I have a system for the most part. I just know what I would like the system to be. I know what I would prefer. And there's your high evolutionary. A bathtub unboxing channel. Don't need to see a soapy, sexy gym. I, I agree. No one needs to see that. Not even the one person that might say she wants to see it. I don't even think even she needs to see it. That's just... It's a punishment for shoplifting in some countries. I have a spaceship. All right. Webman, which I believe Mr. Largo sent to me, if I'm not mistaken.
one, you bastard. Don't fuck with me. One more. There we go. Good cut. There goes his hand, one of his hands. We'll get it. We're not going to pull a clamp champ. For those of you that are relatively new to the community, a clamp champ is when I drop the hand and I can't find it. That's what that is. But I have since found the clamp champ hand. It was just during the stream, he was, it was nowhere to be found. You know, for not being a gigantic fan of the character of Webman, I gotta say the figure's pretty fucking cool. It's pretty good looking. I like him. I like him a lot. Look at me, I'm flying through the air looking for Spider-Man. Very cool. Punishment for shoplifting in some countries uh, is actually a line from Wayne's World. Garth, that's punishment for shoplifting in some countries. And I nicked it from that movie, and no one ever gets the reference in most cases. But I've always said it, because I think it's a really brilliant line that got overlooked in a movie that is largely overlooked in modern uh, conversations. So, feel free to nick. No. Yeah. Got the hand. Yes, what is a Zika? And also from the same package from Jim Largo. Spider-Man 2099. Good old, good old Miguel O'Hara. You know, in sharp contrast, I love this character. I love this run. Oops. Almost stabbed myself there. I'm not going to lie. But it was definitely an almost... He looks great. Look at him in all his glory. I strongly recommend both Wayne's World films, uh, Ben. My personal preference is the second one, just because of a British character they have in the film. 
sleeping all kiss add 10 years to your life, man. I learned it from Keith Richards, we tore with the stones. Perhaps this is why Keith cannot be killed by conventional weaponry. Yes, this was my Welsh accent, Karen. Beat you to it, mate. So his cape is just kind of in there. All right. Nice and robust. So we're going to put that old capey ape on there. See what it looks like. Oh. Old Spidey here has a frozen foot and a frozen thigh. Oh, yeah. All his whole leg, every joint is frozen. So we're going to have to heat him up some point because he is a froze up motherfucker but he looks cool but he's definitely going to need some heat to need some tender loving care i call the dolphin type background music yeah i wanted something everyone could tolerate Well, as far as the joints being frozen, guys, these were stored at Jim Largo's place in Guatemala for some time. So there's a good possibility that with the heat and humidity there, that any stiffness out of the factory got worse because this everything kind of stuck together. It's a little heat. It'll be fine. Little heat. It'll be fine. That's how much garbage done put a mild dent in the bin which is good we got a lot more to do we're gonna go with good old war machine next which i'm so fucking happy to have war machine a real war machine These blast effects are fucking crazy. So you have these little ones that you stick on the floor. They're the ones that come out of the foot. That you stick in there like a cone. Which, I gotta admit, that's pretty ingenious. I love that. It's kind of amazing. like a cannon blast effect. Yep. Water's the best, man. Water solves so much stuff. Not just in toys, but in life. 
And then this is meant to be like a swipe, like I'm firing da -da 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 -da. motion. We got some smaller uh, smoke and blast effect, which is nice. I didn't notice the smoke before. Try to be very careful with these because I do not want to lose these on the floor. All right. Got those safely out. Got these rocket ones, which I think are just the coolest. Very cool, very cool effects. Nice of them to include an unmasked James Rhodes, which I'll probably make. I'll I'll find a way to make a custom James Rhodes without the without the armor at some point. God damn. Jeez, that would not be an easy figure to steal, let me tell you. Some great articulation on these weapons he's got on him. Very cool. Very, very cool. Very, very, very cool. Man, I like him. That's awesome. War Machine, ladies and gents. What's that old saying? Keep your friends close and keep Johnny Sorensen closer. If he had a any malice in his blood, he would be a really difficult to deal with troll. Let me tell you. I love the man dearly. I am continuously impressed with his ability to make the jokes. No, keep him further away. Thank you, Melvor. Appreciate that. Keeps me from thinking I have to talk my way through everything and you guys that one. This isn't getting unboxed just yet. Right. 
Punisher with the bike. Punisher. Uh, I do not have any 70s Walmart music. I apologize, sir. So this is just like the Wolverine bike where they have the, the handlebars separate from the bike, which is fine by me. Makes it easier and safer to store. Handlebars. Jeez. The bike. Zero paint deco. Except for the front. Which, it is Punisher's bike, so I would have guessed it would be black. So I understand that move. Probably just... Put that there. He also has a machete, like Jigsaw. He has a baseball bat, but his is made of wood. Well, it's meant to look like it's made of wood, anyway. Got this pretty kick-ass helmet that I'll never use for the Punisher, but I'll find a use for it. Jeez. Wow, they really are pushing their... Another sawn off shotgun, but it does have space for the effects that I get, came with Jigsaw. So I'll probably use it with him more. He also comes with a snazzy Uzi. And uh, I forget what the fuck the name of this is. My, it's not a Mac 10, I don't think. No, a Mac 10 is totally different. That's a completely different weapon. Now to get this damn head out. There we go. So his regular head is the extra head. Then the head that comes on his body is battle damaged. Battle damaged. And he has all these clips that are molded into his leg. There's no place to put much of anything. There's a hole that's supposed to be for a backpack or something in the back, but there's nothing that I can see that fits in that hole. Nope. He just got a hole in his, his thing for nothing. Like, it's non-functional. But, it's a good-looking Punisher. Though I am tempted to paint his arms black with, with gloves. I don't know. Very cool, though. Glad to have him. I think this would be a horrible ASMR video because that click a clack and with the plastic, like for ASMR, it drives me up a wall, dude. Can't stand it. the crinklies, can't stand it. Besides, if I started talking like this, you all would run screaming. See, that part I can understand. But the actual getting the toys out of the package part, oof, that would be horrible. Mm. 
You'll trade me for the Skyrim helm? Will you trade me? What do you trade? What do you what do you got? What do you got? What do you got? What do you got? Because I wouldn't say no to the right to trade. Shoppers are advised to enjoy our cafe. Half price on Mops and Lego today. Send you pick? Okay, cool, man. I'll take a look. <laughs> Spoilers. Spoilers, Badger. You can just have it. You can just have it. Much as you've done for me, you can just have it. I don't need nothing back. So I have three 80th anniversary figures sitting here. Thor, Iron Man, and Captain America. Captain America. I believe all these were sent from Mr. Largo as well. Which these were very hard to get a hold of at the time. They're still not easy to get a hold of. They've reused the buck in a couple recent figures, but I like these versions the best. I'm very grateful to have them. Very, very grateful to have them. Yeah, there's amazing artwork on the back. They should just cover the whole fucking back of the box. But of course, no. Hasbro doesn't think that way because they're assholes. The level of detail on Mjolnir is just insane. Am I worthy? Clearly I am. It's got the inscription right on the damn thing. And it's actually etched in there. That is so cool. Come on, Thor. Come on, Thor. Really, you got to be like that, dude? Fuck. Any hard rubber cape. Which I will never understand why they do that. Hey, TJC. Hi to you as well. Hope you enjoy the replay. Hope you get some relaxation out of it. And yes, Goji, YouTube is weird about that stuff, for sure. Disco nap. That's right. Found out that a disco nap is when you take a nap before going out to the club or out for evening plans. And it's in the it's in a few prominent dictionaries, so that's a real thing. I bet you guys know what I'm doing right now. I'm like, should I keep this box? But there's nothing really special about the box. I got some cool artwork on it, but I could probably find the artwork in high res online and print that out. But old Thor boy here just looks the damn classic. Fuck, that's a great figure. Uh, 
And because he's a little tall, I want to put him in vertically. Verticlays. Just gently do that so it's not the crushes. Little wangs. Thank you for the likes and thank you for the weather forecast, Mr. Epic Badjar. This is a great fucking Iron Man. effects out and his spare hands. We'll get him out next. There you go. Damn, that is a great Tony Stark head, man. Come on. Alternate nosed Helmet. Me, I love good old Shellhead. Just the way he is. And he's super posy posy right out of the box. Look at that fucker. Damn, it's a nice figure. Thanks, Largo. He sent me one before, and that one ended up um, like the let the knee was fused. And he sent me his spare. I said, oh, you can just sell the other one. I'm like, no, I'm sending the other one back, so you at least have one. It's very kind of him to do that, and I'll never forget that gesture. It's a very special... Iron Man to me, a very special Iron Man figure in particular. A very special memory. Let's get all his blast effects in there. Well, I'm glad you're home safe, John, and I'm not surprised that people forgot how to drive, sir. I'm glad you're home. I'm sure Andy is too, pal. Iron Man. 80th anniversary. Great fucking figure. <sighs> Steve. Love Captain America. I love this version of Captain America very much. Very much. Come on. There we are. Huh. So I didn't realize this one has like the throwing action on it on one of the hands. But what appear you can take it off. Let me test that first. So you got this peg here. Let's do that. It's on a hinge. I didn't know this. You just bend the hinge. And now it'll fit on his arm. That's good engineering. That's a nice way to dual purpose that. That's cool. 
that's how you do throwing effects, Marvel or Hasbro. I don't know why you stopped doing it that way. That's awesome. That's what I was thinking, Johnny. For the Stark. There's definitely some good suits I can get out there. Like right now, uh, what's his face from the CIA in the Black Panther movies? He's on sale. He's got a nice suit body. It'd be worth getting him for that purpose. Of course, Cap would come out of the packaging easier than anyone else because he just wants to help. He just wants to help. Oh, that's cool. So he has alternate fists and a more stoic, kind of semi angry face, I guess. And there he is. Plus, you can use the peg on the to put the shield on the back. They didn't realize that. See that? All right. The cool factor of this figure just tripled for me. She can just put the shield on his back. That's that's cool, man. That's so cool. God, and that's great. You, you probably can't see, it, but there's iridescence, so it does look like chainmail. And it's dark enough so it doesn't look cheesy. God, it's a great figure. Man. He's been frozen a long time. Yes. And Jason, I don't blame you. Here, also, did I pick up the 20th anniversary Iron Man with the Charles Bronson head? Ah, uh, no. No, I did not. Although that would have been cool. If they actually made one. Now he goes into a different kind of suspended animation. Yeah, it definitely it, it definitely harkens to Alex Ross. I kind of guessed that, but thank you for confirming, Mr. Kieran Ball. Sir, appreciate it. All right, this next one is either going to be really uh, cathartic or it's going to be heartbreaking. My Amazing Fantasy Spider-Man. I only bought one of these. Now, I am keeping the box on this one because it is the Amazing Fantasy Spider-Man. And even though the box is kind of crap, this particular version of the, of the character means a lot to me. So we're just going to open him up, make sure he's okay, put him back in the box. Ooh. Stuff falling out all over the place. Which way am I supposed to get them out? This is needlessly complex. Don't forget the pouches. Here we go. Ugh. 
Okay, got all his extra hands and effects. Look to be in good shape. Which I will put right back in there. But they look very nice. Little wingy dings. Got multiples of these for different poses. They should be just flexible, but. Okay. And this, I'm guessing, is a web line. Yes. Kind of a lackluster web line, but okay. And it is the right figure. Don't worry about that. I get, I get, I mail order everything almost. I'm more worried about there's a lot of QC problems with this particular figure. He's posing fairly well out of the, out of the box. So I'm not going to push it without heat. But that is definitely a Steve Ditko inspired Spider-Man, folks. Even though this is a recent modern release, um Having a version of Spider-Man that was evocative of Steve Ditko has always been a bucket list toy for me. And uh, so in a way, this is a holy grail for me. And to know that I have one in good condition, that's important to me. Very, very treasured figure. Very treasured. How the fuck did he go in here? Head first, that's right. Head first here. Legs through here, I guess. Yeah. Something like that. We did this. We did this. Okay, we'll do the same thing over here. Not horrible to repackage, but a little weird. It's a little weird, but it does work. And I can put hands there, webs over here, just slide them right back in. He'll be good. Hey, Master Versa Toy Hunter, good to see you. Welcome. Hope all is well in your world. Pretty stoked on that, to be honest. Pretty, pretty, very stoked. There we are. Okay. Goddamn figures in this box. Ugh. Shit, yeah, there's a lot in there.
So what I'm going to do... So I'm going to unbox... You're not wrong, Goji. So what I'm going to do now is take this stack. Two Black Series figures, a Mo2 figure, and a Marvel Legends cap with a motorcycle. Unbox those. Then we'll call it for the stream. Because <clears throat> I'll probably do this a lot faster if I'm not doing it to camera. I'll just be over there, which is what I'm going to need to do to get through this box. So apologies on this not being a long-ass stream. But I hope that you're enjoying what you are getting. We'll start with Snake Armor He-Man. I don't see any any rubber bands in this at all. This is actually really encouraging. Holy hell. Are you kidding me? A Motu Origins figure without any rubber bands in it? Get the fuck out of here. That's great. And he is nice. He just get a sword in his hand. I'm not really sure how you're supposed to use this part. Oh, I see. Never mind. Put it in the other hand. I'm just put that right here. Looks like. Yep. You got yourself a snake armor, he man. Look at that. It's a good looking dude. The sword fits on the back there. Didn't mean to flip anybody off. That is one hell of a nice variant of He-Man. I'm glad they made this. I am happy to have you in my collection, sir. Two more here for you guys. Obi-Wan Darth Vader. Has any Darth Vader from the Obi-Wan TV show? And a Return of the Jedi. Boba Fett. Not the reissue, but the one they first did. Ah! And down he goes. I've already taken this Darth Vader out of the packaging because I just could not wait to see him. So this is not anything too earth-shattering from that standpoint. But I love that his cape is soft goods. Fucking soft goods. Ugh.
I mean, that's... That's Darth Vader right there. Like, that's so good. Yeah, I know, Goji. Superpower has been staring at you the whole time. I'm not taking those out. of the, I'm keeping those in package. That's why I'm, I'm uh, displaying those. So I got all the loose old ones, you know. So sorry to disappoint, but it comes from a place of love. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, I know I make jokes and people make jokes about mint condition and boxing all the time. But there's something that I had to explain to someone else recently. And that's that I collect for me, not for someone else. I collect for myself. And as a result, I do what the fuck I want with my packaging. I do what the fuck I want with my figures. And if people don't like that, that's... That's okay. You know, um, but I mean, I don't owe anyone anything when it comes to that. And neither do you, collectors. You, co oh shit. I just accidentally threw away his lightsaber. I'm so busy bitching and moaning. His lightsaber's. Oh, it's right there. Okay. But I didn't throw it away. It just didn't get it out. Which is almost as bad. There it is. <laughs> but I just... You guys know that drives me up a wall. Ronnie Head Jim is a big tease passing on. Never purported to be anything else. I got stuff to do, especially this. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Oh, there's a lot of stuff in here. Whew. Okay. All right. That's nice and sturdy. Thank goodness. Is cut off what oh I see what they did. So they included the whole weapon, but they put it in two pieces so you could act like he just had it cut off by Luke Skywalker. It's clever. It's clever. I think. Well, they doesn't quite fit together, but I'd have to heat them up, I bet. And then there's paint deco to make it look like it just got cut in half. That's a little... But they did include a regular one, too. I just realized that. So, I got nothing to complain about now. They include a regular one. That was about to be a tirade and a half. Come on. There you go. So where am I supposed to put this this grappling hook when he's not using it? Seriously, where am I supposed to put this? Just leave it hanging off of him? Is that is that what I'm supposed to do? Thanks for the instructions too, Hasbro. Really thanks. Jerks. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do with that. It's cool that this exists. I love it. What am I supposed to do? Don't make any damn sense.
Karen's got to go now. I appreciate you. You take care of yourself, brother. I appreciate you. Yeah, I really don't know what the hell I'm supposed to do with this. And his arm doesn't bend, apparently. No, oh, there, there, there it goes. Oh, okay, I got you. So there's a little wrist thing, so it can come off if you're not actually if you're not actively using it. Okay, that's cool. Oh, his antenna comes down to to target. That's very cool. That is definitely a Boba Fett. That's fucking great. I love that. Flame effect. Flame effect. Flame thrower effect. Which goes... Well, that's, that goes reverse. Right here. Where does that go? It's like over top of this. It's got to be that. Now he's shooting fire. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. All right. I'm going to bag these up. I'm going to call it a night. But first, I'm going to get rid of this trash. This trash. Okay. All right. Whoops, Boba Fett first. Right, so Boba is in his temporary home in a big... for that 30th like in the next weather forecast. There you go. You guys are great. Truly. Each and every one of you. I wouldn't do this if it wasn't for you guys. And I appreciate you. You guys make me laugh. You make me think. You've taught me things. And let me know when I've taught you something. And that's... Uh, it's everything I could ever ask for, truly. Thank you guys so much. And Master Versal Toy Hunter says, indeed, if there's something magical I find, like keeping a few things been on card gives you the feel of walking to a toy store. But do collect loose to display, create worlds. Yeah, I definitely, um, I prefer loose for everything because I want to have, you know, live displays. But there are some packages you just can't duplicate. That's why I collect the Todd McFarlane Superpowers figures. So I can have them as carded examples. You know, I have a whole loose collection of vintage superpowers. So there's that. But, uh, oh, I'm sure he is, Bill. I'm sure he is. And yes, Goji, the bag is definitely a better option than the Sarlacc pit for Boba. So, folks, I am going to call it here. Um, spoilers, I will be continuing to do all this work. I just don't want the lights on me, and I don't want... Uh, Y'all see my butt and stuff like that. But I appreciate your time. I appreciate your investment. And uh, we'll see you at the latest next Monday for another Toy Grinds Live. I hope you all have an excellent, excellent night. And thank you so much for being here and listening to me ramble while we uh, depackaged a lot of toys, actually. Thank you, guys. Good night.